Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So, this beautiful Saturday morning, it's beautiful out. Crypto is hot. Bitcoin is doing fine. So, it's a good time to FOMO in. So, today, I'm going to talk about two old coins I just FOMO'd in on purpose. Not because they have been going up to the moon, but more so because I believe there's a lot more room to grow. So, I'm going to share with you these two hot all coins and of course let's do some q a afterwards so thanks for tuning in as always smash the like subscribe to the channel if you're new two streams every day 11 30 8 p.m although on the weekends a little iffy central standard time so make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out and also follow me on twitter facebook and instagram a lot of exclusive content on all of those all right guys thanks for tuning in a lot to talk about. People are feeling good. I am too. For those of you guys that joined last night, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I plan on probably doing Blue Label Fridays from now on. <laughs> All right, uh, let me change my screen. So here we go. Uh, Bitcoin is at 57700 So obviously, pretty good spot. Not back up to 60000 yet. We're kind of waiting, but all coins in the meantime has been climbing up. BT dominance is starting to fall down a little bit, but things are looking pretty darn good, much better than last week. Kind of like I said, you know, after that that pressure from expirations, you know, after that's done or lifted, you know, Bitcoin could breathe and start going up. And while that's been happening, look at look at all coins. Total market cap is 2.22 trillion. I believe. I believe this is all time high. I don't think it's been higher than this. Maybe, maybe not. But anyways, even not, we're we're pretty darn close. There are all coins like Ethereum that's nearing three thousand. Yes, three thousand. And you go down the list. Dogecoin is still up, almost back up to forty cents. Remember today, Elon is gonna go on SNL and he's gonna be shilling Dogecoin hard. That may be the reason why. Binance Coin is above six hundred, and you go down the list. There is a lot. Remember Solana. I've been. Talking a lot about Solana, I put a lot of money in there. It's still climbing. It took a breather. Now it's almost to fifty dollars, and uh, and things just keep going up and up and up and up and up. So this is looking pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. All right. So with everything being so hot right now, I want to talk about these two altcoins that uh, I have talked about in the past. One of them, I think my perspective of this project have changed completely because they have done a 180 and this is good for them see this is what you want to see from projects there's so many projects out there that is similar to another project and sometimes it's hard to compete with big boys right especially like in a DeFi nft space if you're one of the big boys you have that network effect you get to retain the top spot so number two number three number five whatever they they don't get the spotlight Unless they kind of rebrand themselves. And that brings me to the first coin I want to talk about. That is within the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem. And that is Bakery Swap. Bakery Swap and Bakery Token. Now, I did talk about Bakery Swap months ago. I covered them when I covered Pancake Swap. When both were flying high. And then, you know, within the last two months... Pancake Swap just took off to the moon, kind of expected because it's the biggest AMM out there. Bakery Swap, on the other hand, was really, really stagnant. Really, really, really stagnant for a while. You could see that it just, you know, went sideways until recently, boom, started coming back up. But why? Why did it go up? This is when you look at the numbers as for AMM in terms of TVL and trading volume, it's much, much, much lower than Pancake Swap and others in the space. So why are they going up? Well, they are the ones that did a 180. When Bakery Swap debuted, one of the things they said they were going separate themselves um, from others was their NFT marketplace. And you, we know right now, we know right now on Binance Smart Chain, there is no good big NFT marketplaces. Ethereum, there is. Ethereum, there's OpenSea, and there's all these other ones. But, you know, on uh, Binance Smart Chain right now, there's not a whole lot. But Bakery Swap is making themselves into that de facto go-to NFT marketplace. 
So it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity because this is the one thing that's really lacking in Binance, in Binance Smart Chain. They have everything else. DeFi is exploding, um, but not really NFTs. So I missed this article. This came out last week, and this talks about how some of the biggest artists um, that worked with Netflix, Nike, Chanel, Apple, all these guys, and musicians, they will be having exclusive event, which already passed, which was a few days ago, which would explain why Bakery Swap went up. They're having an NFT gallery exhibition of all these things. And you look at it, you know, right here in Bakery Swap, you do see Bakery Gallery. So this is what they're talking about. There's a whole, whole you know, slew of artists on here. Uh, there's a lot of donut stuff on here in case you like donuts. But there's, you know, this is my point. You know, you don't really see anything like this with any other project of Binance Smart Chain, right? So Bakery Swap is very, very smart. So they're like, okay, we can't really compete with Pancake Swap right now. What can we do? Pancake Swap is very, very weak with NFTs. They have some few, a few little cute animation NFTs, but they're not like this, right? So this is why Bakery Swap can definitely. Uh, go much higher because they're in the NFT space and if they do become the biggest guys I mean not even the gallery, but they do have a whole bunch of other NFTs already And you can see right away when you go to bakery swap you go to their homepage You know they, sh they showcase the NFTs right away You could tell they're definitely focused on NFTs and it's a big market that's missing on buying a smart chain Refinable I know just came out recently Seems like there's a lot of controversy, you know, maybe a lot of people sold a lot of people the insiders that got an early sold There was a lot of things going on, but Yeah, bakery swap looks pretty darn good and according to this article I can't say I disagree This article which was the uh, beginning of April says that B BCS will overtake Ethereum in the NFT marketplace share and why do they think this well because Binance smart chain is exploding right now There's so much transactions going on and Ethereum, quite honestly, still has problems with congestion and and gas fees. And some people, I think they misunderstood. People in the chat are like, oh, just wait until EIP-1559 comes out. They'll solve things. No, it won't. No, it won't at all. <laughs> if you don't, I don't think you guys really understand what 1559 is. And, and the miners have to actually approve that. The miners are very against 1559. But let's just say everything gets approved. That does not solve congestion issues at all. It does not solve gas fees at all. Ethereum is still capped at 15 transactions per second. That doesn't solve it. It just makes it so it's more predictable. That gas fee is more predictable. And they could introduce a token burning, which will help. Um, but still, it doesn't solve the congestion issues at all until maybe they implement optimism from um, as a layer two or they... <laughs> Jesus Christ. My mom dog is here and she goes nuts, <laughs> so I apologize for that. And yes, my microphone keeps muting on muting. But anyways, back back on track, back on track. So 1559 is not going to solve Ethereum's scaling or congestion issues. That will be solved if a layer 2 or ETH2 actually comes out. So in case people are wondering or thinking, oh, 1559 is going to solve all Ethereum issues. Uh, no, it won't. It's nowhere close to solving their issues right now. So can this actually happen? Can the NFT marketplace be dominated by Binance Smart Chain and possibly bakery swap in the future? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I still think that BNB will flip Ethereum at the end of this year. We'll see if that really happens or not. All right. So that's number one, bakery swap. Now, when I say I fumbled in, I dollar cost average, okay? I didn't go like all in and put everything in there. I already had bakery swap from, from months ago, but not that much. So now I decided to just add a little more and I'll see how it is. Obviously, being that uh, they already pumped up, you know, 44% uh, today, I don't stress anyone to FOMO in. Um, I would suggest that if you do like bakery swap, do what I did, dollar cost average, put a little bit in and see what happens. Right. Sometimes when you see a good project with good fundamentals, good traction, 
you know they just don't come down just like look at pancake swap right so i did the same thing with pancake swap not too long ago i already had some and i'm like a pancake swap is not stopping it is not stopping and you know what it's up like 40 percent since then right so i feel the same way about bakery swap at this point so that's number one number one and i did see some super chats earlier today uh for support thank you i saw it hotbit got shut down for two weeks due to a hack it sucks i don't know what else to say about it it's it sucks that's why you got to be careful with your own funds uh yep 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 i don't i don't think mdex is gonna do the same thing because it's on hoibi token i mean hoibi chain and nothing really on hoibi chain even ht tokens are not really moving that much so i i disagree with mdex all right number two number two is exchange that i talk about a lot and i use them a lot and i know a lot of you guys use them a lot and that is kucoin kucoin token you know i just look at i put one and one together and I'm thinking, okay, I get asked every single day, George, where do you go to buy all these tokens you talk about? Almost every single one is on Binance, which we know for U.S. citizens, you can't go on anymore. And then you have Binance.us, and some states don't even allow that. So where else can you go, right? You're really limited in terms of exchanges that allow you to buy a lot of these smaller cap projects. Of course, you can go on Uniswap or pancake swap um, but it's difficult for most people right most people are used to just gemini or coinbase or even voyager but you know what kucoin is the one exchange that's still open to u.s residents and they have a ton a ton of crypto out there it's a lot of small projects a lot of big projects and even things like bnb where you can't get anywhere else besides um, besides Binance, you got KuCoin, although I heard Crypto.com added that. But even Crypto.com, you have to go through all this KYC and everything. KuCoin, for the most part, you don't, unless you want to really withdraw huge amounts. Um, so that's why I think KuCoin is very, un very undervalued. You look at, in terms of total volume, yes, they're nowhere close. They're nowhere close to uh, Binance. But you look at their spot volume, it's about half of Coinbase Pro. So you think about how big Coinbase is, the volume on KuCoin is about half. And this has shocked me that KuCoin actually has more volume than even Bitfinex. So that tells you something. So their volume is exploding. KuCoin, in my opinion, is like a mini Binance. Everything that Binance has, KuCoin has. They basically copied, but they're, they kind of spun it their own. They have a coin baron. They have a dividend. They have futures. They have lending. They have staking. They have bot trading. I mean, literally everything you can think of, they have, right? But what I'm looking at is their growth is fantastic. You look at pumpability factor when you're looking at a project that that you hope will pump. Number one, if they're on Binance, they have a really good shot. Number two is if they're on KuCoin, they have a good shot. If you look at all these other projects that's on BitHum or uh, OKX or Hoibi or whatever, they almost never pump. So if you're looking for a pumpability factor, you want to, number one, look at if they're Binance. Number two is if they're on KuCoin. So again, KuCoin and Binance is very similar. That's why I see KuCoin going up a lot more because their market cap is relatively small at $1.2 billion. They have a total supply, very, very small, and that decreases with their quarterly burn as well. So... That's why. That's why I think KuCoin is going to go a lot higher. Again, I talked about KuCoin before many times in the past. And yes, they are a sponsor of this show too, but I've been using KuCoin for years. So those of you guys that are looking for an uh, alternative exchange to trade some of these alts, definitely check them out. That is why I also dollar cost average a little bit more into KCT or KCS. They used to be called KuCoin shares, so now they're KT. K KuCoin token, but it's still called KCS for a symbol. But anyways, um, so I dollar cost average a little bit more into KCS because I do think I think they're gonna go a lot higher. I think they're gonna go a lot higher. All right. So those are the two altcoins that that I fold into because I quite honestly I really love these projects and I think they're gonna go a lot higher. KuCoin I already knew about. You know I don't think much changed fundamentally. Other than they just have explosive growth, but Bakery Swap, I think they totally changed. They're going to, they're trying to become the ultimate NFT marketplace 
on Binance Smart Chain. And that is the one place that Binance Smart Chain is really, really weak at. There's no big NFT marketplace on Binance Smart Chain and Bakery Swap could be it. All right. So that's it. That's it. Those are the two I want to talk about. Now, before I'm going to Q&A, I have some sponsorship stuff I have to get out of the way, but I think you'll enjoy it. Number one is Morpheus Network, which is in the supply chain space. They have a SaaS platform. And recently, I got something funny to show you guys. Recently, they, uh, uh, Dan, Dan uh, the CEO, interviews uh, Roger C uh, Crook. Um, he was the ex-CEO of DHLs, and he's advisor for more for his network. And they talk about some challenges in terms of supply chain, especially with Fright. Like, there's, I, this, this is why it gets funny. So they, they do a lot with Fright. They made a big partnership with um, with uh, Golf Tainer. Not a partnership. They won a big competition, but they are working with Golf Tainer, which is the world's largest privately world's largest privately owned port operator that handles a ton of freight every single day. And they're working with Morpheus Network to track things better and handle logistics better, even handle automation, insurance, and all that stuff. Right in this blog, in this blog, they talk about how there's black swan events, like a giant cargo ship like this getting stuck sideways in a canal, and this one in a Suez Canal. I'm just thinking, how does, how does a big cargo ship like this go sideways in a canal like this? And, and I'm gonna show you guys a clip because it shows you how old I am. Some of you guys are younger, have never seen this movie, but do you guys remember Austin Powers? Remember this scene where he's doing a three-point turn? <laughs> manure yeah. <laughs> this cracks me up i remember i was like a teenager when i watched this and i couldn't stop laughing at that <laughs> but that's what it reminds me of like if you're in a cargo ship how does this happen like how how do you like get yourself stuck in a small canal like that i just don't get it but uh i guess things like this happen all the time and uh you know right now people don't know what to do companies don't know what to do you know things get delayed and uh and it just takes a lot of time and effort to resolve and that is exactly what morpheus network is trying to solve um so there's a lot said in this in this uh interview so uh i'm gonna put this in the description of this video but also you guys could check out morpheus network all right uh <laughs> That clip just got me. This is funny. This is really funny. Anyways, okay. Uh, two other things. I, I trust capital. For those of you guys that worry about taxes, I know a lot of you guys are, especially in the U.S. If you want to transfer your IRA to I trust capital, you could then trade your crypto with your IRA for 1K, even Roth IRA. So you could do a whole lot and not worry about taxes until you retire. And right now they have six months free on top of my one month. So that means you get seven months free if you sign up right now. Okay. So usually there's like a small monthly fee, about $30 to help you do this. But the trading fees is very, very low and they allow you to trade tax free. So if you're interested, check out I Trust Capital. Seven months free. There are uh, my affiliate links in the description. And lastly, lastly, Partesia Blockchain. They are today's sponsor and i've covered partesia before they're a promising blockchain that's focused on privacy they're really about privacy they're they have, they're working on a very fast and private chain that allows you to basically store data encrypted data and only access it when you need to on their chain so they call it the mpc and some of you guys have asked me about this project before it's like a giant computer where it basically encrypts your data and you can access it when you want to. And right now, they have their testnet live. They're going to implement sharding in their testnet pretty soon, right? But there's a whole lot of things that's going for Partesia right now. They have built-in Oracle system, so they don't you don't have to rely on uh, Chainlink, right? They're going to implement sharding. They have transparent privacy, speed of light final, uh, finality. You can't fork it, right? You could stake it. There's native staking, and there's just a whole lot whole lot more that's built in here so if you're interested in partesia then yeah check out their link it's in the description of this video all right that is it uh let's do some q a now all right i said a lot there just a real just a recap um some of you guys are football fans 
Charles Woodson. I think you guys know who he is, Hall of Famer. He came out of the Whiskey Company, and he he uh, shot me a message on IG. He's like, hey, I saw you drinking. I want to send you my bourbon. I'm like, who is this guy? And I look in. I'm like, wow, it's Charles Woodson. I'm not a big football guy, so I, I would have recognized it a lot earlier. But, yeah, so he's going to send me some bourbon, so I'm going to try it. And I have another tequila company that reached out. There's a lot of people that's very excited about the Vegas party. I'm furiously trying to plan it for you guys. Uh, it's going to be wild. It's going to be really fun, educational and fun. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if any of you guys are a project, you have a company, you want to sponsor it, get some good attention, email me so we can work something out. Um, all right. Leave my gun ass about varsity. I'm neutron varsity. I just don't think their their plug-in or their player that counts views accurately. I don't even know if that's a real issue. I just don't see the big deal on that. So um Julian asks about Zen Fuse. Let's take a look. Very, very, very small. On Uniswap. Revolutionizing cryptocurrency trading, uh, trading the, the ultimate trading platform built in connectivity. It's like a dozen of other, it's like a dozen of other um, platforms out there. So I can't say it's good or not. Relatively new to crypto life. I appreciate all the data. Ultra. I like Ultra. Decentralized gaming. I wish they do more. I haven't heard much. They've uh, partnered up with Ubisoft and Atari and even Theta. Um, so they're they trying to like gaming platform. I hope they can, you know, come out with their platform soon. Hydra staking on KuCoin 150%. I looked at Hydra Chain. I didn't. It, it just looked like I. It looked like it was some kind of deflationary product. Uh, so, like, I didn't really get it. Solving a total supply problem. Oh, they changed their website. It used to go to, like, their, like, Wikipedia site. Open source proof of stake blockchain with a unique set of economic features. It passed unique combination of inflationary as de well deflationary me uh, mechanics. Yeah, so they were really, like, touting their, their deflationary aspect, which kind of turned me off a little bit, to be honest, but... Uh, looks like they're they're a blockchain that's well protected against fifty one percent attacks. Okay, um, yeah, and then there's a whole bunch of deflationary stuff here. What do they really do? What do they really do? That's the thing. I don't know. Well, they are partnered with the KuCoin probably because of the staking, but outside of that, I don't I don't know what they actually do. Um, Walt Finance, I have not. Connecting all the DeFi features into a Vault ecosystem. Well, they're not even done yet. Can you briefly explain Oracle projects? Best way to think about Oracles is just, it's a middleman. Uh, Oracles are just middleman that can retrieve data and send data. That's pretty much it. Um, so if you need to retrieve, hey, price feeds from CMC, how you go do that, right? You use uh, Oracle to do that for you. It'll retrieve the data from CMC. That's really what oracles are about. It doesn't sound very sexy, but when you run a DeFi project, especially like a lending or staking or yield farming project, where everything has to be 100% accurate with the price feeds, that's where it becomes a big deal. Because even if it's off by a fraction of a cent or it's delayed or something, there's people that could take advantage of the system. So if you heard of Kai, heard from a friend, but don't have not no uh cardia chain yeah i have they're they're from vietnam 
you know, Southeast Asia, like a financial DeFi ecosystem. I think because of location, they're going to be held back a little bit. What else? Yeah, a lot of people keep shilling trias, you know. Okay, they they have been on a run. I still don't quite understand. Uh, Essentia is like a DeFi app too. I covered them in the past. So they, they looked okay, but they I know they were pumped quite a lot. Went through a few pumps. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Thoughts on Nano? There's supposed to be a currency. I don't know what they're doing though. Uh, you know, like at least Digibyte used to be like a currency play, but they... They introduce like a layer two that they're developing, which will bring smart contracts and stuff. Nano, I just think it is dead in the water unless they're doing something similar. I haven't seen anything like that. Uh, yes, Wabi. I know Wabi. I know Wabi very well. I, at least I used to because I covered Wabi or Teal and now back to Wabi. Um, you know, their supply chain in Asia. Uh, I lost track of them, you know, have never hooked up back with them. So I'm assuming that, yeah, they've done really bad with the pandemic, but hopefully they could pick up. Am I bullish on nulls? Yes. Yes, I am. You know, I haven't shown my contest in a long time. Um, I know, you know, with RAN and Crypto Banter, you know, half the show is about shilling banter bags. So maybe I should do the same. <laughs> but anyways, if you guys want to join the end of your giveaway, and this will increase, but right now it's pretty good already. 5 ETH and 4,000 Nulls. All you have to do is follow. Follow me on social media. Same thing with Nulls. Right? Enter. And I'll give you guys a secret clue today for 100 entries. But yeah, that's pretty significant. I mean, look at ETH. ETH is at 3,000. That's $15,000 already for ETH. So make sure you guys uh, check it out. It's on my Twitter page. Adam. I like Adam. I think they're actually very undervalued. I think people just don't quite grasp what Adam is about. But they're like Polkadot, except they're done already. That's the big difference. And they're much cheaper. So that's really uh, that's really the way to think about it. Sunday Swap. First Dex on Cardano. It's got the pancake vibe. Okay. But I would like to see that after Cardano is done. You know, it seems like it's kind of pointless to to come out with it refinable yeah refinable had like too many shillers trying to pump it and then it got dumped and that's still down 23 23 percent today i don't know it just seems like you gotta let this cool off they're trying to become a big nft play but Right now they're uh, they're not doing too good. Uh, game game credits. That's part of gamey, right? No, oh, no. Game credits. Esports solution. Oh, I saw something on I saw something on Twitter about this. Um, true digital item ownership. Everyone's okay. Everyone's texting me, calling me. All right, I got to go. I got to go. Uh, I'll let, let you guys be. Um, Bitcoin is doing well. And all coins are doing well. And I did FOMO into two. A dollar cost average. I did it a smart way. I, but I think they're going to go a lot higher. All right. And here's the clue for that secret code giveaway. And XRP fans, you'll love this. All right, guys. Have a good one. What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>